Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, for nerds, by nerds, hang out with this nerd. Ted. And today we're going to do another edition of What Does Your Alignment Say About You? And today we're going to keep the universe in balance with True Neutral. If you want to jump down to the description below, you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter. It's a great way to get gaming tips as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. The fifth edition, Dungeons and Dragons, they brought back all of the alignments, right. including neutral, because uh, neutral got a bit of, or true neutral got a bit of a facelift in uh, previous editions. Right. I actually think they also brought back the unaligned, but right. unaligned was an, basically replaced neutral in right. fourth, fourth edition. edition. Uh, in, in fourth, as we talked about in all the earlier videos, they they neutered the alignment system down to just a small handful as opposed to the, the standard nine. But it says if you're under unaligned, you don't actively seek to harm others or wish them ill, but you also don't go out of your way to put yourself at risk without some hope for reward. You support law and order when doing so benefits you. Your value you you value your own freedom without worrying too much about protecting the freedom of others. A few unaligned people, the most unaligned deities were, aren't undecided about alignment rather they're they've chosen not to choose either because they because of the benefits of good and evil or because they themselves or they see themselves above the concerns of morality all right and then we have from the fifth edition of the dragons book neutral is the alignment of those who prefer to steer clear of moral questions and don't take sides Doing what seems best at the time, lizard folk, most druids, and many humans are neutral. What does it mean if you're that that? If we're the edition, it kind of sounds like you're a dick. <laughs> That's how it came across to me. It sounded like very self-centered, and you don't really care. That's not really how I've viewed true neutral well, in the past. There it says that you're you have willingness to to help others, as long as there's not a huge risk for yourself or there's going to be some gain to, to be had. You're not good, you're not evil, you're not chaotic, you're not lawful, you're all in that middle. So in previous editions of Dungeons and Dragons, true neutral and the druid were like a big deal. Uh -huh. Like you could only be true neutral in the earlier editions. I think later on it switched to you had to be some, some, version, neutral, yep. some version of neutral. And the idea um, back in second edition and beyond was the druids were true neutral and they took it upon themselves to keep everything balanced. You know, they didn't want too much chaos, too much law, too much good, too much evil. You know, they stood in the center of this axis and kind of tried to hold it together and make sure everything was equal. Now, I don't know if it was stories from you or stories from other long-term gamers, but I've heard tale of druids in first and early second where their DM literally made them balance out their actions and that in a combat, like a single combat, they were changing sides. Yeah, that that's really weird and doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I absolutely agree, uh, but it's... It's out there. <laughs> like, there, are, there are games that, you know, in the old style of True Neutral, that's what, some of the things that players had to actually Some do. of the horror stories you've heard. You know, I could see more or less uh, uh, druids being assigned certain responsibilities and they would, in going out and, you know, fulfilling those. Like, you know, if there's a tyrannical despot, perhaps they kind of, like, either help to rein him in or make sure that he spreads as far as he needs to the balance the other side. Like, I can right. see doing it that way. Mm -hmm. The idea that you would actually turn on your friends because the balance has just shifted a little bit too much is kind of ridiculous. I, I agree. I, I could never, you know, DM that, that kind of style. That doesn't, that doesn't make, sen make any sense to me whatsoever. What is, what is true, true neutral in 5th in edition, or what is it in the, in the current state of play? How do you interpret it? I, I've always kind of interpreted it as, you know, you would mix and match elements of the other alignments, kind of. But you, you kind of probably have your own mo that you kind of follow like, you know like based on your personality like some aspects of your personality might be more ordered and lawful while others are more carefree and creative you might be generally good but you know you also might have a sadistic streak you know so like it's like this hot to me it's like this hodgepodge of of ideals and i feel like if you create a true neutral character 
that as you play that character, you're going to kind of come up with these ideals and, st- yeah, and try to stick to them. Mm-hmm. It, it shouldn't be, oh, I just... Because the way I've seen it played many times in the past, is, um, I want to do whatever I want, so I'm, I'm true neutral. I was I was going to bring that up because that was the other other side of the horror stories mm-hmm. of well, if I'm true neutral, then I'm not good, I'm not evil, I'm not lawful, I'm not catic, I can do whatever I want, and that's not the it's way not the way it works because because it really like even just espousing that philosophy is kind of selfish, right? Is is what you're saying is like I don't care about anybody else, I just care about me. Doing and what I want is chaotic evil. I, I we didn't go as far as to say it's necessarily chaotic evil, but it's definitely more towards the bent of chaos uh-huh. and evil. Uh and it could go either way, right? right? Like it could go I would say neutral evil or chaotic evil. If you want to do whatever you want whenever you want, that's where it falls in my opinion. Yeah, well, it, it, it can. It just depends on how far you're willing to go. You know, if you really just totally disregard others and you don't care what happens to them at all, then yeah, then it, it could be. But I, I almost feel like also being chaotic evil is like you would you actually would go out of your way to be cruel. That's true. Where you know you can you can just be I do whatever I want without being sadistic or cruel, that's, and, and that's where like the evil will come into right. play. You know, we we brought up the the, the balance. And it's, in my opinion, when you're playing true neutral, that is something to actually look at. So typically, if you are on, be it a large or a small story arc, that's where you're going to be concerned with the balance and you know weigh, weigh those things against your ideals. Typically, you're going to be working within the, the, the same guidelines of the adventuring party because... You're all working on this mission together, and just just as a you know a scale can tip, you know either way. You also have the front and back. That when you're true neutral, that's what you're looking at. You're you're weighing all four sides, and you're not someone that's like, well, I need to stand in the middle at all times, because that's not how you achieve See, balance. The way I look at, I, I've kind of looked at true neutral as. It's not so much that you see the need to maintain all of the different uh, accesses, uh-huh. but you value them. Okay. You, you you believe they, and, and this is how I kind of believe like the droids of old could, should have been played too. Uh-huh. Is they all have a right to be and exist. You know, the lawful good society that seeks to exterminate all the evil creatures. You know, I could definitely see that Drew and standing against that because he's, you know he's saying that's wrong. You know, to wipe them out of existence, they have a right to exist, to grow, and try and change, or, right. or at least have carved out their own life somewhere. The neutral alignment is like the opposite of the extremists, right? It, you know, it's neutral, right? It's right, it's right, <laughs> literally in 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 the name. I feel like that alignment. You know, is the most open to, to the views of others, where it may not like it may not. You may, being you know neutral, you may not want to live the lifestyle of a lawful good paladin uh, who's chaste and uh, you know upholds right and, uh, and the good in the uh, good and the American way. Now, um, or you know, or do what a despot would do that's chaotic evil. But you you see both points of view, and that. In the greater plan, that there is a there is a point and a reason for all of them. Or if there's not a plan and a reason for, it, at least they have a right to exist. Mm-hmm. But I, I almost feel like you know someone who's neutral is probably more contemplative than maybe some of the other alignments. Right. You know they would make good moderators as well and good diplomats because they have the ability to see all the different sides of, of an argument, the points that someone's trying to make. Where you know someone who's lawful or chaotic or kind of they're kind of set in their ways, like this is how it is, and it's hard for them to see beyond how they do things. I don't know, guys. A neutral in your games, how do you play? How do you seen to play? What about horror stories? What's the worst? <laughs> lo- what's the worst neutral, true neutral player moments or DM moments you've seen in your game? You can drop them in the comments below while you're at it. Like, share, and subscribe. You can check us out over on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.